Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. If I were going to start over with OpenTX radios today, I would start with a programming structure I'm about to show you. I'd like to get into the material quickly, but I've got a couple of caveats I've got to outline first. First off, if you're not familiar with global variables, go back and watch my tuner setup video and my expo on a slider video. Those will be important as we progress through the content in this video. The second one is that this is a relatively complex arrangement, but once you see it, the light's just going to click on and you're going to say, oh my gosh. And at the end, operationally, it'll simplify your life. Trust me, I've been using OpenTX for a lot of years and with this configuration, the light is just on for me. I get it. And it makes a lot of sense. That said, if you don't care to exploit the power of things like global variables and adjustability on the fly, then just set up your inputs, mixes and outputs and go fly. It's fine to do that because I've been doing it that way for six years. But I'm telling you, if I started over today, I'd be using this configuration arrangement. The next thing I want to point out is that this is a conceptual design, but it is functional. I do things many times in my videos for illustrative purposes that will apply and be well understood by the most amount of people. So if you hear something like a weight or expo combo that doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. Just understand the concept behind it, okay? If you take that into consideration that this is just conceptual, then you can apply it for an operational configuration on your radio. Let's uncover the mystery. What I'm talking about today is using the excellent six position switch on the RadioMaster TX16S. And if you have a jumper T18 or T16, it'll work on those as well. But now the idea is to use the six position switch and exploit that in combination with flight modes so that we can manage our flight characteristics and our inputs and our weights and our expos and our trims and everything else. So we're taking a lot of the other things that I've covered in prior videos and we're mashing it up today and putting it together in an operational template that you can use to make your life easier while you're flying. In order to do this, there are three things that we need to cover. Number one, we're going to create our flight modes. We're going to define what the flight modes are, we're going to assign a switch to them, and we're going to put some special functions in place so the radio will tell us what flight mode we're in. The second thing we have to do is create our global variables and assign names and min and max ranges so we can use them in the configuration. The third thing we have to do is configure our inputs to use our flight mode and global variables that we set up in steps one and two. All right, let's get started. The first thing we're going to configure are flight modes. And in my case, I've defined three flight modes that I want to use. The first one is takeoff. The second one is sport. And the third one is acro. And to give you a little background behind what I'm thinking here, I'm thinking about in a takeoff mode, I don't like to have a highly sensitive stick. I kind of like the weights to be a little bit more suppressed, but I like the expo to be low as well because I want to be able to make corrections without being ham fisted on takeoff. So in my case, I like a lower weight, say 30 or 40, and an expo that's also low, like say 10 or 20. In sport mode, I like higher rates, but a little bit more expo. The idea being that I want to be able to do rolls and loops and things like that, but not be too aggressive with the plane. So in that case, I'll have a higher rate setting and a little bit more expo than takeoff just to kind of smooth things out. And then in the third mode, acro mode, imagine 3D. In that case, you want full throws, full rates, but you also want a lot of expo so you can soften up the middle a little bit. So that's the logic I used. Your logic may be completely different and that's okay. Just understand the approach I'm taking is to assign different weights and expos to suit my flying style in the different flight modes that I might be using. In flight mode one, I've named it takeoff and I've assigned six position switch number one. And oh, by the way, you'll notice that we're doing this on the radio instead of in companion. There are two main reasons for that. The first one is that companion has some issues with the six position switch and actually assigning that in the simulator. It doesn't work. So for that reason alone, I wanted to do this on the radio so you could actually see it work. And then the second reason is because in companion, the flight mode screen and the global variable screen are mashed together. On the radio, they're separate. So I wanted to make sure you knew how to do this on a radio in case you're at the field. Functionally, they work the same way. It's just the arrangement, the GUI is a little bit different on the computer. One thing that I'm not going to cover because it's kind of confusing on the radio, and honestly, I don't even remember them all. If I want to do it, I'll do it in companion, in the configuration on companion, and that's the use of trims. If you see in this column one, it says rudder trim, uh, and then the next one is elevator and then throttle and then aileron. 
what that has to do with is which trim do you want to use? Do you want the flight mode to use its own trim or do you want it to use a trim from a prior flight mode or do you want to add its value to a prior flight mode? So again, it's kind of confusing to do that on the radio and I'd much rather do that in companion. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be skipping over the trim concept in flight modes. But if you're this far ahead and able to follow along, you'll understand it by looking at companion, what they're suggesting. So I'm not going to get into trims in flight modes. Just understand that in any given flight mode, you can specify a trim for that flight mode, or you can use a trim from a prior flight mode. To give you a very quick example, consider a fast mover plane like a jet. Let's say in flight mode zero, you want a flat straight trim at 50%. And then at flight mode one, you want that same flat trim that you have in flight mode zero, but you know you're gonna be punching a throttle and your plane has a tendency to climb. So you might want a little down elevator. You can add that down elevator trim in flight mode one. So if you put it in say speed mode, you can have the elevator trim down a little bit while you hit the gas. That's the idea. Again, I'm not gonna use that in this configuration, but if you're interested in that kind of thing, you can separate your trims per flight mode. Okay, the last thing I wanna point out is that for trim five and six, that's this switch and this switch, I've turned them off. And the reason for that is because these act as momentary switches. There's nothing in this configuration that takes advantage of those, but again, I said I'm gonna use this as a template for my future models. With that in mind, T5 and T6, I want those off all the time because I, for an airplane, I really have no reason to use those as trim switches. And by turning them off, now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six momentary switches right there in front of me. There is a video on the channel that covers that. I'm not gonna cover that today. Okay, so you can see on flight mode one, I've assigned a value called takeoff for the name. Six position switch one is the activating switch. Trim five is off, trim six is off. That's all I've done in this configuration. The next two modes are sport and acro. So I just named them sport and acro. Six position two, six position three. And then five and six are off. And that's it. One thing I need to point out under the flight mode screen is that you do have a six position switch. So if you want to define six flight modes with this switch, you can do that. Also be aware that if you define all six switches, that means you will either be in flight mode one or two or three or four or five or six. If you don't define all six switches, anytime you press one of these buttons, if it's not defined, you default to flight mode zero. So as you can see, flight mode one is bold right now. If I hit the six position switch number four, since it's not defined, the computer will default back to flight mode zero. So watch this. Okay, so flight mode zero is now highlighted. That's very important as you configure your weights and expos in your inputs and your global variables later on. Right now, just suffice it to say that we're only using flight modes one, two, three. And if I'm not in switch position one, two, or three, I expect the radio to be in flight mode zero. Before I get into the special functions, I do want to show you one other little benefit of using flight modes, and that's in the main screen setup. Notice there's a blank space down here at the bottom. If you hit the telemetry button, there's an option that says flight mode. When you put a check mark in that box, and then you actually enter a flight mode, that flight mode is displayed in the space in the middle. Flight mode one, takeoff. See how it says takeoff there? And then flight mode two, sport mode. Sport mode and so on. Now that's not hugely beneficial while you're actually flying the plane, but it is a nice visual aid when you're getting ready to get started. I just wanted to point that out, that that's where the flight mode shows up. And the text that's in that space comes from when you're in the flight mode configuration and you enter a name right here. That's the text that gets displayed on that screen. Okay, let's jump into special functions. For special functions, it's nothing very complex. You can see I've got 6P1 through 6P3 defined on SF1 through SF6. So all this does is play back-to-back -back audible prompts for the flight mode and what the mode name is. When I hit SP1, it says flight mode one, takeoff. Flight mode one, takeoff. When I hit two, it says FM2, sport mode. That's it. That's all you need to do for special functions. It's a very simple setup. Okay, that brings us to step number two, which is global variables. In the global variables tab, the first thing I wanna point out is I'm using only two variables, GV1 and two. On GV1, I assign that for weight, and on GV2, I'm assigning that for expo. 
when you want to edit these values you can either edit directly in this matrix by clicking on the line and then scrolling to the item you want to edit or if you long press on the variable name and hit edit it brings you into this table that lets you edit directly in this page so notice a couple things in here first i assign the name wei for weight and then i've got a min value and a max value set the idea there is that if i'm using this variable for weight I don't ever want it to be zero because if for some reason some configuration option I don't catch sets it to zero, then you have no weight on that control surface and that means you lose control of the plane, which is bad. So by setting a min and max values, I'm doing a little bit of safety work to make sure that my weight can never be below 20, nor can it overdrive the servos by being over 100. So that's just a little safety feature. Notice on the bottom half of the screen, we've got flight mode zero, one, two, three, all the way down to eight. In our case, our variable is GV1, and that GV1 represents 50 when we're in flight mode zero. GV1 represents 30 when we're in flight mode one. That's the nature of a variable. The variable represents a number. That'll be important for later on when you start to see how these variables are applied in the configuration. I just want you to keep that in mind. So flight mode zero, I have a weight of 50. Flight mode one, 30. Flight mode two is 80. Flight mode three is 100. In my configuration, Flight mode one is takeoff mode, flight mode two is sport, and flight mode three is acrobatic. So in takeoff mode, I want very little deflection. In sport mode, a lot of deflection. And in acro mode, all the deflection. And then the safety measure, or the catch-all FM0, just gives me half deflection. And that ensures that no matter what mode I'm in, if, if I leave a defined flight mode like one, two, or three, it defaults back to zero, which is why I set a value of 50. The same general rules apply to the Expo. Expo is represented by GV2, and in flight mode zero, I have a value of 10, and then in one, two, and three, I've got 20, 40, and 80 respectively. So anytime there's a GV2, that value will be replaced by the number for the given flight mode. So 10 is the number for flight mode zero, 20 is the number for flight mode one. Might be easier to see in the table. Might be easier to see it. There you go. So 10 replaces GV2 when I'm in flight mode zero, 20 replaces GV2 when I'm in flight mode one, and so on. Okay, our global variables are configured. That brings us to step number three, and that's to configure the inputs. Now you're gonna really see it come together. All right, on my input screen, notice that I only have four lines. If you have double or triple rates, you have a lot more than that. But here's the cool part. Hopefully you can start to see what's gonna happen here. When I'm in flight mode one, GV1 represents the value 30, and GV2, which is Expo, represents the value 20. When I'm in flight mode two, GV1 represents the value 80, and GV2 represents the value 40 for Expo. Does that start to make sense? So let's take a look at the inputs and see how it works. Okay, I'm in my takeoff mode, and remember I've got a weight of 30. So if I move the stick all the way over, you can see that weight of 30 is realized all the way here on the left. There's a very small expo curve of 20. So there is a slight curve in there, but not much. You can't really see an expo curve when it's real small. It's hard to see it. But on the right-hand side, you can see I also reached 30 on the other end. Now, if I watch what happens to the curve when I hit flight mode two. Flight mode two, sport mode. Okay, you can see that the rates really changed. They jumped from 30 all the way up to 80, and then all the way up to 80 on this side, and you can see a little bit more of that expo in there. Not a lot, because it's only 40, but you can see it. You'll really see the expo on the next one. This is acro mode. We've got a value of 100 for the weight and 80 for the expo in acro mode. Flight mode three, acro mode. Okay, you see how that expo curve really comes in strong here? And then I've got a rate of 100 to 100. Another place you can really see this is in the channel monitor. So I'm just going to hold the stick and move through the modes. I'm all the way over on the right in acro mode and I've got a weight of 100%. Now I should drop down to 80. Flight mode 2, sport mode. And down to 30. Flight mode 1, takeoff. So there you go. You can really see the weights come into effect there as well. Okay, let's cover a couple more configuration items on the inputs. Notice that for line name, I selected a value FM0-3. And the reason I did that is because when I'm looking at the input screen, I want that line name to tell me when this should be highlighted. This line should be highlighted when I'm in FM0-3. You can use whatever descriptive text you want. 
That one made a lot of sense to me because I intend for this line to be active when I'm anywhere from zero to three. So that's why I labeled it that way. The other thing that you have to do is for the weight, assign GV1. So instead of having a percent or a number here like 30, you long press and you pick the global variable represented in your table. In my case, it's GV1. And then for the expo, you need to set GV2. You normally have a number like 20%. To change to a global variable, you long press on this field and hold it, and you'll see the number change to text. So it says GV1, and I'm just gonna to move to GV2, which is my expo variable. And then the last thing, notice the modes. It might be a little hard to see here, but I have this input uses GV1 and GV2 for every flight mode from zero to three. Notice that four, five, six, seven, and eight are all dim because I don't have those modes defined. If I did, I would turn them on, but I don't. So I'm only using these two variables in flight mode zero through three. No other modifiers on the input tab. And that's it. So you can see on this screen what it'll look like. Okay, that's the functional piece of this configuration. So you can see now in different flight modes, we have different rates being applied for the inputs. Here's the cool part and here's one of the major benefits. Let's say for example, that in flight mode two, you think the expo is too high or too soft. Well, normally you'd have to go and change the expo here, here, and here. When you use a global variable model, you don't have to do that. You simply go to the global variable, and I said flight mode two, which is highlighted, that expo right now is set to 40. If I think that's too much expo, I can tune it down to 30, and that changes it for every surface. And then I can also, if I say, well, I don't think that the weight of 80 is enough. I really want it to be 85. I can change it here and now every surface, whether it's the aileron, elevator, or rudder, will see that change. And let's look at the rudder just to check it out. So in flight mode two, you see we've got a negative 85. And we just changed that. And it would be the same for the elevator. If I back out and go to the elevator, I've got a value of 85 there as well. So the idea there is that just by changing the global variable, you change the weights for all your surfaces. You may or may not want all your surfaces to have the same weight, and that's fine. You can add static lines, you can add hard-coded values, you can add a different flight mode, you could add a different variable. You could say, I want GV7 to represent your aileron and elevator and have a completely different weight or expo for the aileron and elevator than you do for the rudder. The magic in this configuration happens because instead of having hard-coded numbers for different rates, instead of having a dual rate or a triple rate set up for the aileron, which is three lines, and then a triple rate set up for the elevator, which is three lines, and a triple rate set up for the rudder, which is three more lines, instead of doing that, we just have three lines. And you can set your weights and your expos just by manipulating the values in your global variable table. Since you stayed around at the end of the video, I've got a pro tip I'm going to share with you now. If you go over to the special functions tab, you might notice on SF8, I had this one plugged in the whole time. I just didn't have it on, but I'm going to go ahead and turn this on by putting a check in this last box. And what that does is lets me adjust GV1 with my right slider. We've done this before. We've done this kind of thing before, but let's show you what it looks like. So if you want to have a tunable configuration while you're flying, notice that I've got my weight, GV1, and I'm going to move my right slider and look at the value. You see how it's changing from 100 down to 20? That's because I set the min and max in the GV parameters, but I can go all the way down to 20 and all the way up to 100. So if you want to have a tunable setup, you can do that. The one thing I'll caution you on is that if you use a tunable setup, it will replace your weights in every flight mode you're in. It doesn't revert back to the hard-coded value. Just keep that in mind. That's all I've got on flight modes and global variables. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It really matters for small channels to get subscriber growth for video placement. It helps my videos get in front of more people. For those of you who are already subscribed, hit that like button, leave a comment, share the video, tell your friends. Don't forget to check out my affiliate links in the description if you need an open TX radio. I've got an affiliate link for you up there. And I, remember, I've got a t-shirt store. So if you need some cool RCVR flight gear for your next field day, make sure you visit the t-shirt store. That's all I've got for today, guys. Take it easy.